All you'll need is your yarn, a crochet hook, and some scissors to cut at the end. I'm using 100% cotton yarn and a 5mm hook. If you're interested in making the same exact look as I am, this is a medium worsted weight yarn, 100% cotton. I'll leave a link down below for my favorite ones. Go ahead and start off with a slip stitch. Starting off with a slip stitch, I am going to chain 15 plus 1, so 16 in total, and that will equal the width of my headband. Now what I'm going to do is single crochet two times into the second stitch from my hook, so one single crochet and two single crochets. And then I'm going to single crochet all the way down and I'm going to stop two stitches before the end. Alright, I stopped two stitches before the end. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease by one by combining these two stitches. It's also known as a single crochet two together and it just decreases your stitches by one. So I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over and pull through, I have two loops on my hook, I'm going to insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. I have three loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three loops and that decreases my stitch. Now I'm going to chain one and turn my work. From here on out, we're only going to be working in the back loop of our stitches. So if you turn this way, you notice that there are two, two legs of the stitch. It's also known as a V stitch. So there's one that is closest to us, closest to me, and then there's one that's farther away. That's the back loop back here and the front loop up here. We are only going to be working in the back loop. This will help to create the ribbed effect that we're going for. So we ended by single crocheting two together on this side. So that is what we're going to continue to do. In the next row, we are going to start by what we finished with. So since we finished with single crochet two together, that's what we're going to do in the next row. Now I'm going to single crochet all the way down into the back loop only and I'm going to put two single crochets in the very last stitch. Here's where it can get kind of tricky, especially at the very beginning. From the top, which is the angle you're looking at, you can tell that there are two more stitches. However, if you look at it from the side, it can be a little bit more confusing and you can't really tell. If I didn't know any better, and the very first time I ever did this, I definitely thought that this was the last stitch. And so I did two single crochets into this stitch and I started moving forward. But then I realized that that is not the last stitch in this row because we chained two single crochets into this last stitch the last time we were here. So it's very important that you're actually putting the two single crochets into the correct stitch. So if you couldn't tell already, we're keeping all of the decreasing stitches on one side and all of the increasing stitches on another side to give us that nice angle that we're going for. So another tip I have is to make sure that you're counting the stitches as you go. You want to make sure that you have the same amount of stitches in each row because if not, you can very easily lose track of your project. And if you're like me when I first um, tried to make up this pattern, you definitely will lose some stitches along the way. And to go ahead and continue decreasing on one side and increasing on the other 
until you can get this to wrap completely all the way around your head and then I'll meet you back up once you've gotten to that point and then we can move on to the next step. Okay, so I have crocheted the length of my headband. I know this will fit perfectly around my head at just the right tightness or looseness that I like. Now what I'm going to do is I've decided to make this the outside of my headband, so the part that will show. I am going to now link them together like such and that will help us to eventually create that nice like diagonal spirally look that we're going for. So in order to do this I am going to make sure that my yarn is right here above my project and I'm going to have my work close to me. I'm going to zoom in so that you can really see how I do this because this is going to be a flat slip stitch so that it will lay flat against your head and it won't create any bubbles or creases or any weird things and you can, it'll be very seamless. You won't be able to tell where your headband starts and stops. I'm going to connect my work like this like we showed earlier. I need to make sure that my yarn is leading up. I'm going to view my work from the top. Notice how there's a back loop and a front loop. If we're laying this down flat, we want to work into the back loop, very similar to how we were working into the back loops for the whole project. So, this is where I left off, right here. I know that I want to connect it like such. I'm going to go into the back loop. So I'm in the back loop of one side and I'm going to go in through the back loop of this side. I have three loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three of those loops and that will join it together for our first slip stitch. So let's do this again. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more so that you can really see. So I am going to insert my hook into the next back loop. That's from one side. Now we want to get the back loop of the other side. We have three loops on our hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. That will create the slip stitch. In my opinion, this is the most difficult part of this project, mainly because it's difficult to see where the back of the stitch might be, and that's pretty normal. I'm a little bit further down and as you can see it's really coming along beautifully and it's just looking like another one of our um, ribbed sections that we created earlier and it's laying very flat which is perfect for this headband look. Alright so I have completely connected the two ends of the headband and it's right here very seamless. You can hardly even tell that it's there. That's what I love about this option as a way to combine. And it's great for granny squares. That's how I learned about this actually. All right, so to complete this look after I finished sealing it off, I went ahead and did a slip stitch around the entire, uh, both sides. Um, I thought that it really helped to complete this look and now let's try it on and see how it fits. <laughs> 